Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Today we'll be talking about one German chemist, and his name is Robert Bunsen. He was born in Göttingen, Germany, on March 30th, 1811. He was the youngest of four sons. His father was Christian Bunsen, and he was the professor of modern languages and head librarian of the Göttingen University. His mother is from a military family. When he's 17, he already started working on a degree at Göttingen, an age when most of us are still in high school. He received a PhD of chemistry at age 19, at a time when most of us just started university. He won a government scholarship and traveled all around Europe, going from one chemistry lab to another. In 1834, he started his first important work. He discovered an antidote to arsenic poisoning with Dr. Arnold Bessrode. He discovered that if you add iron oxide hydrate to a solution with arsenic compounds, it actually converts it into harmless ferrous arsenate. And this will be very, very useful for him. He got a lot of acclaim for this because arsenic is actually a very dangerous compound which could potentially explode in dry air. And as you can see, in nine years later, he had an accident in which arsenic exploded in one of his experiments and he was severely poisoned and the only reason why he lived is he used his own antidote which he invented nine years before his right eye however was permanently blinded in 1841 bunsen invented the zinc carbon cell which is known as bunsen battery and it replaced the zinc platinum battery at this time it is obviously a much better alternative as, as you can see, platinum is a very, very rare element and it's therefore very expensive. Now this is used to power telegraphs and he combined the cells into large batteries allowing researchers to work in electrochemistry because they no longer have to use the very expensive zinc platinum cell. In 1846, he went to Iceland and made fundamental contributions to geochemistry. He discovered that geysers have a reservoir of superheated water, which is water that is more than 100 degrees Celsius at the base. And it is, be it is because of this that water rises from below as pressure falls and the water boils explosively to form a geyser. And he did this by literally standing beside one. In 1855, he invented one of his most in iconic inventions, which is the Bunsen burner. It is used today as a flame test, heat samples, and to sterilize equipment in medical laboratories all over the world. In 1859, Bunsen teamed up with a man named Kirchhoff, and together they made their own spectroscope. A spectroscope is an instrument in which you can, once you burn a piece of element, you can see these lines on coming out, which is kind of like a, a fingerprint for these elements. So you can see this kind of like a barcode thing, so you know, oh, this must be hydrogen, or oh, this must be carbon. They discovered two different elements. In 1860, he dis they discovered cesium. In 1861, they discovered rubidium. In 1864, uh, Robert Bunsen and a fellow research student uh, invented uh, flash photography in which they used uh, magnesium as a light source to be used to take photographies in poor ambient light. It's, these are just some of the many contributions he made for chemistry. 
Uh, he never married or had any children, but he had this reputation of being a very fun person to be around. He had a short book published after his death called Bunsen Bunseniana, which had a lot of his anecdotes. Uh, he was very, very risky, and he worked with a lot of dangerous stuff. For example, he worked with arsenic, which could explode. Uh, he worked with poisonous gas. Uh, he worked with other explosive chemical reactions. Uh, he worked next to a volcano, and he worked to, next to a geyser. All of it, which could probably kill him. Uh, he won the British Royal Society Copley's Medal in 1860, and he also won the Royal Society Davies Medal. In 1877. In addition, he was elected foreign member of the Royal Society, and in 1883, he became one of eight foreign members of the French Academy of Sciences. Uh, he retired at the age of 78, and he shifted his work to geology and mineralogy, which he was very interested in throughout his career. He died in Heidelberg, Germany on August 16th, 1899 at the age of 88. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a nice day!